Edward Abbey wrote and said many times, quote, all gold is fool's gold, end quote. Clearly not a fan of money, Cactus Ed eked out a living as an author and a public speaker. The United States Geological Survey explains that fool's gold can be one of three minerals. The most common mineral mistaken for gold is pyrite. Chalcopyrite and weather mica also have appeared very similar to gold. All three minerals have relatively little monetary value. From Live Science on October 24, 2024, comes a story headlined, Fool's Gold is Driving a New Accelerating Climate Feedback Loop in Canada. Here's the subhead, quote, The weathering of rocks in the Canadian Rockies is accelerating with rising temperatures, creating a feedback loop that is set to dump even more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, end quote. Here's the lead, quote, Fool's Gold may be driving a disturbing climate feedback loop in the Canadian Arctic, end quote. The following two paragraphs provide an overview of the article. Quote, Erosion of rocks like pyrite or fool's gold releases carbon dioxide, and thanks to that weathering, CO2 emissions from Canada's Mackenzie River Basin could double by 2100, a change equivalent to half the current annual emissions from the country's aviation industry, a new study found. Sulfide minerals like pyrite react with oxygen and other minerals to release sulfate and carbon dioxide. As warming causes more Arctic permafrost to thaw, more rocks are exposed to the atmosphere and weathered, creating a positive feedback loop in emissions. The researchers published their findings October 9th in the journal Science Advances. End quote. I'll turn to the peer-reviewed paper shortly. First, though, a quote from a co-author of the peer-reviewed paper. Quote, the relationship with temperature appears to be exponential. That means it appears to be accelerating as the region warms. End quote. In other words, we have yet another self-reinforcing feedback loop, any one of which ensures the irreversibility of climate change. The muted description from the article in Live Science screams downplay the evidence. Quote, Scientists still don't know if there are natural breaks on this climate feedback loop, but better understanding how rates of weathering and carbon dioxide emissions will change in response to rising temperatures and environmental changes is crucial to predicting future warming. End quote. Here's a hint. There are no, quote, natural breaks, end quote, on any one of the many, quote, climate feedback loops, end quote. Once a self-reinforcing feedback loop has been triggered, it's analogous to a runaway train. Its behavior is beyond human control. Trying to stop the runaway train by standing on the tracks will only hasten one's demise. The Live Science article continues with a brief description of the methods and results from the peer-reviewed paper. Quote, to look for clues, the researchers took records of sulfate concentrations. Parenthetically, sulfate, like CO2, is a product of sulfide weathering. And corresponding temperatures from 23 locations across the McKinsey River Basin, the largest river system in Canada, they found that sulfate increased rapidly with temperature. Between 1960 and 2020, sulfide weathering increased by 45%, as temperatures rose by 2.3 degrees Celsius, 4.14 degrees Fahrenheit. Please note that this temperature increase applies only to the McKinsey River Basin. These chemical reactions appear to be occurring at their fastest rates in mountain regions where rocks are broken open by water seeping in and expanding as it freezes, a process known as frost cracking. They are slower in lowland regions where peat forms a protective layer between the rocks and the air the researchers note, end quote. Then again, the article in Live Science turns to wishful thinking. Quote, Sulfide rocks are believed to exist across the Arctic, including the Canadian Rockies, Svalbard, and Greenland, but their concentrations remain understudied. Additionally, there could be other environmental factors, such as less permafrost melting or more soil forming, that could slow down this weathering, end quote. Could be? Of course, there could be any number of, quote, environmental factors that could slow down this weathering, end quote. However, could be and likely to occur rarely inhabit the same space. In addition, again, once a self-reinforcing feedback loop has been triggered, it's analogous to a runaway train. You do not want to stand on that track facing the oncoming train. The co-author I mentioned earlier is quoted in the Live Science article. 
quote, we don't see any slowdown in our data, end quote. He goes on to make two paradoxical statements. The first of these is solution-oriented. Quote, these reactions aren't just happening in the Arctic. They seem to be increasing in other places where rocks have been exposed by deforestation and land use change, for example, in the European Alps. In those locations, it may be more feasible to consider solutions which have co-benefits, for example, reforestation, which could act to lower these rock mineral reactions and CO2 release, while building tree biomass and soil carbon stocks, end quote. The co-author's final quote is also the bottom line of the article, Live Science. Quote, I would say it's important not to be too alarmist about this, end quote. I agree. Quote, it's important not to be too alarmist about this, end quote. On the other hand, it's important to be honest about this. There is nothing wrong with admitting that yet another self-reinforcing feedback loop has been triggered. After all, even the designed-to-fail Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change admitted that the self-reinforcing feedback loop has been triggered. As I have mentioned a few dozen times in this space, only one self-reinforcing feedback loop is required to ensure the irreversibility of climate change. We are there. Earth is amid abrupt, irreversible climate change. The peer-reviewed open access paper in Science Advances was written by four scholars and published October 9, 2024. The abstract includes this critical information. Quote, Oxidative weathering of sulfide minerals in sedimentary rocks releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. In permafrost zones, this could be a positive feedback on climate change if it increases with warming, yet another sulfide oxidation rates and their temperature response remain unknown over large spatial and temporal scales. We analyze a 60-year sulfate concentration data set from catchments across the McKinsey River Basin. Sulfate fluxes increased by 45% in the main stem with 2.3 degrees C of warming, and the temperature sensitivity suggests that continental scale CO2 fluxes could double by 2100. The largest increases occur in catchments with geomorphic settings, which act to rapidly expose rocks through physical weathering and thermokarst processes. Comparisons with a weathering model suggest that warming can increase reaction rates, and changes in the exposure of minerals with warming are also required. Future warming across vast Arctic landscapes could further increase sulfide oxidation rates and affect regional carbon cycle budgets, end quote. There are far too many uses of the word could in this abstract. This could be a positive feedback on climate change if it increases with warming. Plenty of evidence indicates this is the case. Quote, future warming across vast Arctic landscapes could further increase sulfide oxygenation rates and affect regional carbon cycle budgets, end quote. Of course, this is the case. No weasel wording is necessary. 